next demo, I am going to do an uh, extension of my previous uh, simple box. This time, instead of having, right now I've got a box that moves to the mouse and animates itself. Um, what I would like to make this time, instead of just one box, I'd like to make uh, maybe many boxes, maybe the boxes um, generate over time, let's say. Um, and I would like the boxes to move independently. So the first step, if you're going to repeat some code, the easy thing to do is to bundle it up in a function. So I'm going to make a new function called create box. And that's going to contain my add drawing. Now notice at this step, nothing happens because my function hasn't been called. Uh, so at this point, if I just make a call to create box. My code works exactly the same as it did before. All I did was add a new drawing. Um, and I could make several calls to create box and I won't see really any difference. Actually you can kind of see it's getting thicker and moving faster. Now why is that? Because I've called create box four times so these update steps are now calling four times because they all share the same variable here, the same box x, box y. So that's the trouble. Um, now conveniently enough, in JavaScript, functions create what's called a closure. So in a function, any variable that lives in that function um, will, will not be accessible outside. So if I take these four variables that I used for my game and I move them inside of the create box function. Now you'll notice it moves at the normal speed because there's, well there are four boxes but they're moving, each is updating its own variable. But the quick handler is now broken, right? I don't get in there that the variable is not defined because JavaScript allows you to just create a new variable. So what's happening is this is creating a global variable box x but that's different than this box x variable. So if I want many boxes to move towards the same box, I might have to make a new variable called mouse x and mouse y. And maybe those begin as undefined. Um, we'll update those when we click. And then we will have to figure out well, actually, we've got a couple things to figure out here. One is, how do I make the boxes not all the same? The other thing I'd want to figure out is, how do I make the boxes move maybe towards the mouse or something like that? All right. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the first step would be, let's make each box have different x, y width and height values. So then we have to decide in our game what's happening. Are the boxes going to be created at a specific place? Are they going to move at different speeds? Um, so actually, I'm going to keep the boxes. Well, let's make them. One thing we could do is we can give the, the function parameters. Um, so I can say box x, box y, box width, box height. In JavaScript, I can also give those default values. So I can say equals 50 in here, just like I did before. Equals 50, equals 100, equals 100. Um, and now, here I could say box x, 50 x 100 oops forgot my squiggle there we go now I've got four boxes that are overlapping um, and I can add any other properties I want um, I could for example make this one smaller oops it's called box width isn't it box width
that. So now I have all different boxes being created by my box function. Each box has its own x and y. Um, they're no longer responding to the mouse x and mouse y, um, but they could be. So now I have to decide how they're going to move and in what way. Um, so right now all I do is I update the x with a velocity. Um, a simple way to think about speed and um, updating boxes would be to say that um, the boxes will have a speed variable or a velocity variable. So I can make a velocity and then instead of that 100 I can multiply by the velocity. Alright, so now the boxes all have a speed but what speed should they have? Well, let's say the box speed should be proportional to the distance from the box and the mouse. So if I said um, uh, velocity x equals box x, let's say mouse x minus box x, There we go. Now they move towards the mouse. Um, let me explain what I just did. I said or zero because um, another way I could have done this is if, if the mouse x is undefined, then the velocity I want to be, uh, then I'll get not a number, which is a false e value. Um, all right, so that's pretty good. I have all these boxes together, so I might want to add some other logic. Um, one thing I could do is I could just add a little randomness to it. Plus equals math dot random times 20 minus 10. That would be a plus or minus 10. So now there's some like jitter. See, they're kind of moving around there. They have just a little jitter to them, so they kind of shake. I could make that a significantly bigger jitter. And there we go. So now I have these parameters that come into the create box. I have this um, velocity variable that updates. So each box has an x, a y with the height and an x and a y here. I have top level variables for where the mouse was clicked, which is the only thing all the boxes need. And all the boxes will just naturally glide towards the mouse click whenever that happens. Um, if I wanted to make it slower, this is currently um, going to move there in one second. So if I wanted to make it move there in five seconds, I'd divide by five. And now they move much more slowly. And of course they jiggle as they move. That's pretty good. Um, you could define other kinds of movement if you wanted. Um, I could make like a, uh, let's say that I want them to generally move in one direction all the time. That will be random. So I'll say this guy to 
is going to tend to move in some random direction. So that way, instead of it being random each time, it will be just a tendency. So now these boxes all have their own direction they like to go in. And they float towards the mouse, but they all kind of tend to float away. Now they keep kind of apart, but there's like some order to it. There you go. That's like, you could keep playing with these numbers and these variables however you'd like. Um, the key thing to understand is that by putting this function and putting these variables inside this function, it's a container. Each box has its own settings, if you would. That's called a closure in JavaScript. Um, and then the variables that are defined outside of the function are global. Another thing we could do if we felt like it is we could create a new box each time when the user clicks it. Um, so maybe the new box goes at, um, let's say, box X is going to be uh, box Y. Excuse me, box width, max box random, box height, now every click makes a new box. So they all respond to clicks and new boxes keep showing up. Every box has its own variable, but every box responds to the global variable. All right.